All right, hello everyone. This is Chara, and today we are going to be talking about blasters. And joining me today are two top-level blaster players, Kyo and Cotton. If you guys want to introduce yourselves, we'll start with Kyo. Uh, I'm Kyo from uh, FT Win. I used to play blaster a lot, and then it was terrible, so now I don't play it at all. Awesome, Cotton. Uh, my name is Cotton, and um. I've been playing Blast here since the start of Splatoon 2, and I only play Rapid now because all the other Blasters are trash, <laughs> and that's about it. All right, so typically when we do these discussions, we go through each weapon, talking about the main weapon itself, its kits, and then at the very end, we talk about the weapon class as a whole. But because Blasters are such a special and garbage case, we're actually going to be talking about the weapon class as a whole first, and primarily why blasters are bad and the worst class in Splatoon. So, either of you, if you want to start, why do blasters suck? You want to go first? Um, you can go. Okay. Um, at least from my POV, I think the biggest thing with blaster is it's kind of like Charger in the sense that it just wants to kill things. It doesn't want to do anything else. But there are so many other weapons that do its job better currently. That and this game has a like higher focus on just like painting and controlling and just staying alive but blaster only wants to just fight and build and trade kind of just doesn't work out that and it's received massive nurse in between games like mm -hmm. just about every blaster yeah. except rapid yep cotton and um the only one that's like viable right now is crafted because all the other ones are uh, slow and they're not good in the high like the high level like high pace meta where like you have to ping everything and like move up where the slow blasters are like they can't do that or other weapons can do that job better yeah definitely so, um i do want to bring out a few nerfs in particular just to kind of go over some specifics about it and i think one big nerf that is not exclusive to blasters but likely hurt this class a lot is the damage health recovery nerf this was back in the early days of splatoon 2 Originally, when you recovered your health from enemy ink, it took about 1.5 seconds, and later in the game, they reduced it to only one second. And since Blasters are a class that plays off of tick damage heavily, this seemed to hurt them quite a lot. So, how drastic do you think this nerf was in terms of making Blasters worse in the game? Was it a massive nerf, or was it just not that bad in the grand scheme of things? Were other Blaster nerfs a bigger culprit, basically? Cotton? Um... It definitely hurt it quite a bit, but um, later in the game, the armor meta came around, and I think that hurt Blaster even more because um, the one-shot Blasters couldn't do their job because the armor would just protect them, and then you would usually get rushed down very easily and just picked off. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that could definitely be a problem. Yo, what, about, what do you think about that nerf? I don't really think it hurt the um, like the regular blaster class, like custom blaster and going the spots down that much because they shoot relatively fast. But range blaster like had its time in the game at some point where it was like pretty decent, but that like threw any chance of that ever being good out of the window again because that weapon shoots extremely slow. I'm pretty sure you're going to start healing before or like slightly after they get their second shot off anyway. So. Yeah, a range blaster shoots one shot per second, so you can, if you get into enemy and pretty much immediately after getting shot, heal enough to live a second shot if both of them are weak enough, so great mechanic there. But yeah, also, I mean... mm -hmm. uh, um, the indirect, or max indirect damage was reduced between games. I think it used to be 80, mm -hmm. and now it's like 70, so just like 10 extra, or 10 less points of damage, so there's more chances to heal and live indirect, so kind of bad yeah that could definitely be a big problem for it so at the end of this video we'll kind of discuss ways to make blasters better but for now we're going to go into depth with each blaster what its kind of strengths and weaknesses are and go over its kits like normal so we're going to be starting out with the luna blasters if either of you guys want to start talking about just the main weapon of luna you can go uh, I think the main weapon of Luna is actually not that bad, honestly. Like, uh, I know we rag on the entire Blaster class as a whole besides Rapid, but I think it's pretty decent. It's, like, in an okay spot. Mm -hmm. Um, 
a lot of the guys said like before i think weapons do its job better and you compare it to like i don't know try or carbon that just do the same thing that luna wants to do but better but after it got like a couple of buffs in this game like um i don't remember if it got an ink efficiency buff but i think it was like a speed ink efficiency and end lag by four frames yeah, yeah those were pretty helpful for it and i remember playing it a bit after that got buffed and i was like oh this is pretty good and then i discovered tri saucer and then i never played it again <laughs> yeah. so, i mean i guess to go off of that kill would you say luna's like not a bad weapon but it's more there are just better short range killing options like try and carbon yeah for sure like um i don't know if maybe try or carbon were to get like destroyed in some patch like I could see myself actually unironically picking Luna. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Cotton, we'll go to you to talk about the kits, and we can start with the normal one first. What do you think of the Spot Bomb Light Baller one? I think I think it's good, um, especially with the Light Baller, because you can get extra mobility for moving in different positions. And the Spot Bomb is always helpful, since it's one of the best subs in the game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, do you think Baller works pretty well for just helping its survivability? Because that is the one thing it does have distinct from the carbon and tries it as like a purely selfish survivability special. Is that somewhat helpful or is Baller just not that great right now to where you'd rather have something else anyway? Baller is definitely not the best it could be, but it can be helpful in certain situations. It just depends. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well... The Vanilla Luna, pretty solid then, but what about the the Mine Luna, the Luna Neo one? What is that kit ever worth running, or is that just forever going to be garbage? Um, it's pretty much not worth running at all, because uh, Fizzy Luna could just do his job way more better and more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely seems to be kind of outclassed in that regard. I guess there's not too much to say about it. Mines aren't super useful outside of when you already have map control. It's not too great for when uh, you don't have any map or blasters struggle the most. But uh, the Kensa Luna is probably the weirdest kit to ever be given to a blaster. So, Kyo, can I get your thoughts on it? Uh, the kit belongs on a different gun. Like, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. That's what I, like, what I think about Busy Luna. That's why I'm just like, this could be on anything else and it would unironically be pretty good. But it's so counterintuitive to the way that Luna wants to play, like, sitting under, like, plats and, like, sharking, never being seen, always surprising you, but, like, instead, Fizzy Luna just wants to paint. Like, it just wants to throw Fizzies the entire game and then throw a rain on the zone and pop, throw more Fizzies. It's like, okay, I mean, I guess you could do both. Like, you could shark after you paint everything, but, I don't know, Fizzies just isn't as good as, like, Spot Bomb for Luna. Mm -hmm. um in the department of like actually fighting so it's the kit and the weapon want to do two different things and they kind of don't really mesh that well it's, like in theory it's a good all-around kit but like in practice it just doesn't really work out mm -hmm. yeah that is a little bit unfortunate i definitely think this is kind of the case of a great kit on one of the only weapons that makes no sense for it whatsoever yeah all right well i guess to kind of wrap up with Luna Blaster, we'll talk about changes to the weapon class as a whole here, but are there any specific buffs or changes you'd like to see to Luna that don't apply to the other weapon classes? Like any kind of specific buff that you think Luna alone needs, or any changes you want to see to it? Or is it alright, just needs a better kit? I think it's alright. Like, I think the vanilla kit for Luna is literally the perfect kit it can get in the game. It just doesn't really fit right now in, like, the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I know maybe a blast <laughs> is gonna sound troll, but maybe a blast radius buff, but probably not. <laughs> it it yeah. might be kind of unhealthy if they got that. I can I can already see like YouTube comments that are completely scared to see Clash 2.0 in the game. So yeah, yeah. Well, all right, Luna. Unfortunately, being a little bit all class, not in the worst spot of all time, but still a fairly solid for what we've said about blaster class as a whole. Not the worst one for sure. But moving on from Luna, when you add a little bit more range, you get the regular blaster. And Cotton, I believe this one is your favorite of all of them, so why don't you start off on the normal blaster? Just no kits involved, just the main weapon. I think it's good, or like, it's better than what the range blaster is right now because, like Kyo said earlier, that it's like really slow and it shoots like, it shoots really slowly. So the 
vanilla blaster is definitely better at pushing up and being more aggressive because it can shoot faster and get one shot. But the kit isn't the best. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that in a bit. But I mean, Blaster's main weapon is was meta for quite a little bit because it got that big swim speed and lag buff of 8 frames. But ever since it got its radius toned down a little bit in a patch after it, we just haven't really seen it since whatsoever. I mean, Kyo, do you have anything to add on it? Um, yeah, like you said, it had like its time in the meta for like a good while. It like shined, but I don't really think any of the nerfs were the things that uh, killed the class. I, I just think it's like power creep of uh, weapons that are that have range of actually being good now. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, I like to bring it up all the time because I hate it, and it was like really bad. The, the induction of the the Kensa weapon. And um, Torpedo being a sub in the video game kind of just, like, we're going. Yeah, tor yeah, Torpedo is definitely one of the strongest counters to Blasters out there. Completely prevents any form of sharking. Very problematic for sure. Alright, well then, I guess with regular Blaster a bit out of the way, we can talk about the two kits and the regular one, probably not the best one though, but, I mean, is there anything positive to say about a cotton? No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I don't really got anything there. I mean, Miss seems to have solid synergy, right? I mean, it's at least like okay with it, or would you I really mean, just yeah, rather have a different it's thing? like okay, and it definitely could be helpful in certain situations, but usually most of the time it's useless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's if a bit unfortunate. Can, if you can trap someone with Miss and then shoot them, you probably could have shot them twice. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a perfect way of putting it. Well, we also have the Custom Blaster Kit, which was the main one that did see use when this weapon was meta for a little bit. So, what about that kit? Is that kit at least decent? Yeah. Um, definitely the Inkjet was nice on Custom Blaster, but, um, and I was, I was fine with, um, Auto Bomb. I didn't mind it. I think it was okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, solid kit, really. That's some good news for it. Well, is there any meta specific? Is there any weapon specific change to the regular blaster that you would like to see again? Not with the class as a whole, so it's a little bit difficult to come up with something. But is there anything specific to normal blaster you'd like to see, or is it really just that there's too many mid range damage up weapons in the meta for it to be able to fight? Okay, uh, if you want to take uh, this one, I think, I think that's really it. Honestly, if anything, maybe just let it shoot a bit faster like it used to or just like give it a small radius buff but like i don't know it just doesn't have like the speed to keep up with the things that'll just space it or like the range technically to keep up with the things that'll just space it mm -hmm. yeah all right then well moving on from there we have one more slow blaster left which is the range blaster and i will just let kyo start this one uh so like when you hit the B button, you jump in this game, and then you hit ZR, and you shoot, right? But, like, your shot doesn't go in a straight line. It kind of just, like, curves in a different direction, and that's, like, the biggest thing. It also shoots at, like, negative two speed per second, so unlucky. It's kind of bad. Mm. Yeah, Khan, you have anything you want to add to that? I guess, uh, like... The paint is pretty bad too. Since you shoot so slow, you can't really paint that much. Mm -hmm. I think it's also worth noting that uh, the two good kits on Range Blaster, the Vanilla and the Grim, both have more than the default points, especially with Range having uh, 200p and Grim having 190. So on top of that bad paint, it has high points for Special, which even more hurts its quantity of Special Output. So, yeah, I mean, Range has been never buffed, as I'm sure you guys both know. It's been dead for a while. It used to be meta in Splatoon 1, especially with the custom range blaster kit in that game being fairly good. So a lot of people were hoping the saving grace of range blaster would be its kits, but I don't think it quite worked out that way. So I guess if Kyo wants to start, let's go over the kits of range blaster, starting with the vanilla one. So I know this is, we're only talking about range blaster, but like in general, like blaster as a weapon, I think it's only two good subs will ever be Burst Bomb and Splat Bomb. And if it doesn't have one of that, I think the kit is automatically like worse than what it could be. And mm -hmm. Range Blaster has Suction Bomb. It's already a slow weapon. You give it a slow bomb. The um, Any chance of like spacing and comboing with the bomb kind of doesn't really exist because 
the bombers is so much slower, you can't really roll it at your feet to help during a close quarters combat. Um, mm -hmm. Rain is nice for it, and I think that Rain is what carried it when it was like okay in the game, because the Rain used to be better, but when they increase the price for the Cloud, and also like nerf Cloud, it kind of just uh, fell out of the game pretty much entirely. Yeah, Cloud used to be insanely broken. It had like a bigger radius, it painted better, just absolute pain to fight anywhere the storm was, where now it's not that hard to manage. But yeah, back then that was part of what made range so good, is just the ink storm itself was pretty good. And even if the main weapon couldn't paint, the suction bombs could still help for farming it in some situations for sure. But I think the weird kit for the blasters has got to be the custom range blaster with its cheap bubble blower combo and a curling bomb. So, I mean, Kyo, is this one okay? Or what's what's I mean, up with this kit? I, I legit think if the weapon was better, you'd see you'd see the kit or you see it being played simply because bubble is like I don't know I think it's the best special in the game. So mm -hmm. the best special in the game can't even be the saving grace of this weapon. So that's how you know it's really bad. The the bubble combo is kind of weird, but it. It works, it's consistent if you do it right, so like, I don't really have a problem with it. It mm -hmm. kind of gives Blaster that thing where, like how Roller has, it can't really move well, so curling helps it move, but again, it's not Splat Bomb or Burst Bomb, so it doesn't really help it fight, which is what Blaster wants to do always. Yeah. So, curling isn't enough to make up for its like poor paint. Mm -hmm. Bubbles are really good, but, you know, the sub mm -hmm. isn't the best. The weapon isn't the best, so it's awkward, but it doesn't really have a place. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for those who don't know, you can technically do the bubble blower combo with curling bomb. It is incredibly awkward, incredibly difficult, but you can do it. It is consistent, and that does help the weapon a good bit. I do think this curling problem that it has, like curling in theory, it's nice to get in, but I think for range, it has the very same problem that I would say Sploosh has, which is the Curling Bomb can help you get in, but it's not really a poking tool for when you don't have map control. You can't really set up with it too much. So it does become predictable past a certain skill bracket. But when all hopes seem lost for Range Blaster with two mediocre kits, we got Grim, which theoretically is pretty solid. So I mean, Cotton, if you want to talk about Grim for a little bit first, because this is the main kit that we do see Range Blasters running right now. Is it pretty solid? Does it give some leeway to the weapon's usage, or what are your thoughts on it? Um, I definitely do think the kit is solid, um, since you could use the burst bombs for mobility, and missiles are always nice to have, because you can call out to your teammates where everyone is. Um, but definitely the main fault, like, the fall of this weapon is the main weapon, because it's, like, like we said before, it's, like, really slow. But even with the burst bombs for mobility and the missiles, it's just still bad. And it's like other weapons outclass it. Yeah, it's there is good. other burst bomb missile options out there. I believe there's two of them. I know V Dooley's, I'm forgetting the other one for some reason. But yeah, that definitely is true. Kyo, do you have anything you want to add in terms of the Grim kit? Uh, the weapon isn't ink efficient enough to take advantage of one eight to third burst bombs at things constantly. And the combo kind of just doesn't work as well without damage up being in the game. MPU doesn't give damage to Grim, and you can't give damage to first bombs ever, so people kind of just live that. And uh, bomb defense also exists, so it, I don't know, if you ever are somehow struggling against the Grim, just wear that, and that's just out the window entirely. Yeah, I find it really funny that Blaster got reduced damage, and damage up doesn't work on Blaster, because it's not on, in this game, but they still have bomb defense, so you can still reduce the burst bomb combo potential with no counterplay, so... Definitely an unfortunate thing for it. All right, though. This is one where we'll probably have the most main weapon changes, but are there any specific buffs that you would like to give to Range Blaster or changes you think it needs for Splatoon 3? And we can start with Kale here. Uh, it needs to shoot accurately at some point when it's in the air. Like, you can't have a weapon class that's entire thing is based around, like, killing, and it doesn't have, like, any form of air mobility, so it just gets punished whenever it takes shots because... It's extremely slow, which I guess brings me to the second point of it having extreme amounts of end lag. So it just kind of gets punished after it takes a shot. Even if you like hit a direct on one guy, you're immediately going to get traded out by somebody else because you just have like a massive amount of downtime in between your shots. Mm -hmm. 
and maybe ink efficiency as well. Like, I, I think if you buff the, the other two factors, then it won't really matter because you don't want you probably don't want it to be the same weapon it was in the first game because it was really dominant, but uh, it's not that ink efficient. They can't even take advantage of the fact that it has burst bombs because you throw one, you have like I mean, I guess you throw two and you don't have that many shots left, so it's pretty bad. I'm pretty sure if you throw suction, you have like two shots. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't even know if you get two. I think you only get one. I might be wrong on that. It's two or one, but I don't remember. Someone can probably yeah, correct I know, like, me in one chat. One subsaver, one main saver gives you an extra one. I don't know. Yeah, I know that too. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think Range Blaster is the blaster that needs the most in terms of getting buffs, just because it's been hit in so many ways that it makes it really difficult for it. I'd say one of the main things you need to it would be the ink efficiency. Getting a buff like Lunaga would be super helpful, especially for taking advantage of burst bombs. And it would help if it ever did get another kit with Splat Bomb, or maybe even Torpedo, Suction. Any kind of ink-heavy sub would be a lot better with a bit more ink efficiency given to the blaster. So, I mean, definitely not everything should be reverted, but I think range is well overdue for a buff, and I hope if we don't see it in a patch for this game, then I hope for sure we get to see some Justice in Splatoon 3. But with that all being said, we now move on to two very different kind of blasters that are more rapid fire. And I know Rapid's going to be a main point of discussion, but I mean, we got to talk about Clash first. So, I mean, either of you guys want to start just talking about the main weapon of Clash, let's get into it. Uh, you can do it. It's a fun little niche pick, I guess. It's like, on our own, they kind of get on like two maps only, but that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. If yeah, you somehow get in the range to double direct, it kills extremely fast, but I think you just like sit in really annoying spots and do massive damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does have um, that kind of weird poking capability, but at a much shorter range than is traditional for weapons that have that kind of playstyle. Cotton, anything you want to add? Um, I think it's awkward how you have to like hit four indirects for to kill and two directs to kill, and um, it just has really short range, so you have to go up in people's faces to try and get those directs or indirects. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, definitely can be a little bit awkward to do that for sure. But I'm talking about the kits. We got a good kit and we got a bad kit. And we'll start with the bad kit with the vanilla clash if Kyo wants to take this one. Perfect sub, terrible special. <laughs> it, the clash is never going to be in a position to use Stingray unless it dies. And even then, it probably just immediately wants to jump in and start like being annoyed against her. Yeah. It doesn't fit. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, that is just the thing with Stingray. It really only fits on backline weapons, and Clash being already such a short-range weapon definitely doesn't fit it super well. But with every downside, there is a upside, and we do have the Clash Neo with a much more solid kit. What are your thoughts on it, Cotton? Um, I definitely do think it's better than the vanilla one, but um, like I said earlier, I still think it's bad how you need to uh, kill someone with four indirects or two directs. And I don't think the curling bomb is very helpful up close. And the missiles are good, but not helpful in a fight up close. Obviously, you can use them to find your opponents and go over there and try to kill them. But I don't think it's the best. All right. So, I mean, not the greatest kits, not the worst kit for one of them, at least. So pretty all right spot. Clash has been a weapon that specifically gotten a lot of hate, especially from lower level players, where the amount of shots it fires and just large radius can be very difficult to deal with. So, I ask you this, and Kyo I guess can take this first, but do you think Clash should be reworked a bit, maybe reducing the radius for buffing something else like damage or painting capability, or is the weapon more okay how it is right now and people just need to get good at the game? Nah, just, it's perfectly fine. Just literally walk backwards. That's my advice. <laughs> if you, like, if you somehow feel like Clash is overbearing and you're struggling really hard against it, uh, shoot the ground or hold backwards on your left stick. Those problems will probably go away. You heard it here, folks. The two-step counterplay for Clash. <laughs> you hold backward or you paint your feet and walk away and you'll be all good. All right, then. With all of the weaker blasters out of the way... There is one weapon class left to talk about, the one I specialize in in this case, and that is the Rapid Blasters. And just a real quick 
talk about the difference between Rapids and Rapid Pros, because there'll be people who ask. Rapid Pro has a bit of a slower fire rate, a little bit more range, and a little bit heavier ink efficiency. But outside of that, they don't really have that different play styles or functions. So we aren't going to be separating them, and we will talk about Rapids and Rapid Pros in the exact same segment. So before we get into any of the kits and how good or bad they are, let's talk about the main weapon of Rapid and Rapid Pros as a whole, and either one of you guys can start this one. Yeah, it doesn't suffer from the main thing that like kind of killed last year, so that's like the reason I think it's pretty solid. It deals with armor very well. Because it shoots fast. <laughs> that's what we do. It shoots fast, it breaks the armor, definitely, yeah. Okay, Cotton, anything you want to add about Rapids? Yeah, it shoots fast, it breaks armor fast, <laughs> and um, it pairs up with other weapons very well mm -hmm. um, that do chip damage. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely has a bit more potential. I think just also the less end lag, the better speed that the weapon has is pretty useful. It's not something that has a terrible amount of end lag, so it's still fairly mobile for a blaster. So. Yeah, it also kind of like paints mm -hmm. kind of decently. Just because it shoots fast. Like, the, the shots themselves don't, like, paint a lot, I guess, but, like, just the fact that you're shooting more kind of adds up over time. It's not, like, the best paint in the world, but, like, it's definitely better than what the other things have. It's not absolutely horrible, yeah. I had to figure it that. Well, we got a lot to talk about with Rapid Kits, because it's got five of them, and I will do a little bit of a particular order for this. So we're going to start with the Vanilla Rapid Blaster, which used to be meta for a bit before all of the other Rapid Kits existed, and it was 180p. So what are your thoughts on the Reg Rapid Kit with the Mine one? We can start with Kill. Um, it used to be great because no weapons in the game have range, so it would kind of just put down mines and space everything, and to fight it, you had to walk past its ink mine and take damage from that, which you put. But... After the induction of literally anything in the game that's <laughs> mid-range, uh, it kind of just has less range than that and has no way of fighting it. So. Also, the bomb rush is pretty expensive without a sub to uh, help build your special. So you have to shoot to build bomb rush, which is kind of a troll. It doesn't really work out. Yeah, can't build special too fast. Mine's still fairly solid, but not a bad kit. On the other hand, we have the Rapid Deco, and I'll actually, I'll let you talk about this one a bit, Kyotsu, because I think you're a little bit of a Rapid Deco advocate, or at least you used to be for a bit, so. Is Rapid Deco solid? Is this kit something you really like? Really? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. I, I'm a fan. Uh, back in the day when Blaster was actually pretty good, I'd still play Rapid Deco over a Custom Blaster from time to time. I think it's really strong in TC. Suctions in TC are great, Jetpack in TC is great, Blaster in TC is great, it's like... You just put those three things together. Unfortunately, it's on rapid and not like a regular blaster, but like it's still pretty strong. Um, I think I think at some point I thought it was all right in zones, but then jetpack there is horrible, and it kind of just doesn't really work out in like rainmaker because you're picking a blaster. I'm lucky. Yeah. So, like, it's pretty all right. It's pretty. I, don't know, I guess it's mediocre now. It doesn't really work out in most situations, but I don't think it's terrible. Yeah, I definitely think the kit is excellent for tower and rain, so it works well for tower because of the main weapon also being good there, but yeah, rainmaker is definitely a struggle because while the kit is good, the main weapon is absolutely terrible in rainmaker. Kind of hoping we could get some rainmaker shield damage increase for blasters, but eh, that's a topic for another time. So skipping over a particular blaster, Con, you want to talk about the rapid pro, the regular one with mist and rain? I think the rapid pro deco is definitely better in it, like outclasses it with the kit definitely and um i don't know if the little bit of more range can compensate with the um what rapid has like rapid could shoot a little bit faster than the rapid pro but i think it definitely makes a difference mm -hmm. yeah so just kind of outclassed i mean mist we've yeah. talked about isn't the greatest sub weapon but rain does have at least some synergy with it i'd assume right yeah so it's more just a case of Rapid Pro Deco has a little bit of a better kit, a bit of a better special to get if you're going for that more passive rapid play style, so it just doesn't really have any reason to be used. Yeah, pretty okay. much. All right then, Kyo, we have the Rapid Pro Deco, the one that does see use in that class, and something that's actually been pretty popular in Japan, even in zones. So, I mean, is this the best Rapid Blaster kit? Is this a good blaster, or is it just completely overhyped? 
Uh, I guess it's probably probably the best rapid kit, honestly, which is not saying too much. Mm -hmm. But I think it's pretty nice as a um, an anchor substitute. Like if you run rapid as your longest range weapon, or rapid prone decker, I mean, as your longest mm -hmm. range weapon is pretty uh pretty nice because it probably gives you an extra armor. Assuming your comp has an armor, it defends itself pretty well. You got the wall. It's I know, it, it's not really gear dependent either, so you just run like a fuck ton of swim speed and just space everything. It's reliable, but it's not it doesn't really excel at anything. It's just very reliable. Solid, reliable weapon, pretty good at everything, but not nothing really crazy, nothing that excels at anything. So it's definitely still a solid, like good option to pick up. And that just leaves one weapon kit left to talk about, which is Crapid. And I'm sure most of my viewers watching know I play this weapon. I am an advocate for it. I do not think it is the best weapon, or as high as I used to think, but I still think it is a fairly good option. But Kyo, on the other hand, does not like calling this weapon good. In fact, he has said that in order to get the weapon being called- in order for him to call this weapon good, it will cost 1 million Twitch channel points, which is, uh, yeah, good luck with that, ever. So, alright, Kyo. <laughs> You have the floor on my own channel, on the Crap and Defenders channel. Why is that weapon not that good? Uh, Baller is horrible, honestly. <laughs> so, here's the thing. I hear you. Okay. So, you know how I said before how uh, V Rapid can't build it special because it has a mine? Mm hmm. Um, Crap it kind of can't do the same. I mean, you can roll your torpedoes to build your special, but like. More often than not, Krapitz will be throwing their torpedoes at people, so then they just shoot them down and you can't build baller, but you're also building baller, so unlucky, because even if you get your special, it's kind of bad. Yeah. Um, I'm not really a fan of torpedo at all, besides against weapons that are not played in the game. It's like blaster and like roller, so... A lot of my hate for the weapon comes from the fact that I don't think the kit fits anymore. Like, it fit at some point, like, when it came out, it was like destroying like blasters because people are still playing that but no one's really playing things that are that weak to torp always really bad i think the only reason i'd want a torpedo in my team comp is if multiple weapons were weak to it like two maybe like a charger and then i don't know what else maybe charger bucket mm -hmm. but besides that uh, i'm not a fan of torpedo and i'm not a fan of baller but in any form or sense so it just kind of doesn't really work I think you can like get away with some these nice things, maybe rolling torp and acting as if it was a burst bomb, maybe direct into baller, but I think these things are like too... what's the word? Uh, I don't know. Not streamlined, I guess. They're like too... random. That you can't really get those things to consistently happen, so... Yeah, too niche. Cast that, too niche for it to actually be a strong weapon in my head. All right, so more of a situational thing. Khan, what's your take on this weapon? I think it's, I think it's good. I like, I like Crapid. Um, definitely what Keo said earlier. I do think Baller is weak, and um, but I think the thing that makes it good is the torpedo because um, you could roll it and you could do sixty damage and then direct someone and they die, or you could two indirect roll torpedo they die, and um. You could use the you can use the torpedo you can like throw torpedoes at people to zone people out, and you can push up while they're distracted on the torpedo and get a better position. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with all these points from both sides. Obviously, my opinion will always be a little bit different. I think torpedo still has a lot of potential more in terms of, well, rolling and bouncing it and such, and trying to use it for more chip damage rather than poking at people, but. At least it's still a blaster that I think we can all agree is at least in a fairly solid spot. It's probably still one of the stronger options out there. And that wraps up all of the individual blasters themselves. So I guess to kind of wrap up this discussion, we've talked about why the weapon class is bad. So now, what does this weapon class need in Splatoon 3? What are the overall changes? Is it better damage? Is it less lag? Is it jump RNG? What's the thing blasters need to excel in Splatoon 3? And we can start with Kale for this one. It needs for there to not be a global invincibility special in the game. <laughs> no, so no armor, basically. No armor, no yeah. bubbler. Well, I think yeah, bubbler okay, maybe, but... Bubbler is fine. I think a lot of the reasons that Blaster is bad comes from simply because of the way that the game is made and not 
because of like the weapon changes themselves like sure they they fit a lot but like you could see that um, custom blaster like had its time and like luna like had its time but then eventually all of that got pushed out of um the game because one guy's afk in the base just hitting right stick and you can't do shit about it yeah all right cotton anything you want to add in terms of weapon changes for the class Probably the jump RNG definitely is annoying whenever you jump in, it goes in a different direction than you want it to. Mm -hmm. And maybe better painting, I don't really know. But yeah, it Blasters definitely had their time back then when they were uh, good. Mm -hmm. But then other weapons just started to outclass them. Yeah. I guess to give my take as a Blaster player for a while as well, I definitely think the amount of jump rng is crazy obviously there's a debate between if it should be removed entirely or just reduced but i think to me it definitely is something that should at least have some level of it taken away be a little bit better so definitely something to change there but i guess the last topic to bring up is i have seen a ton of people especially since we've seen range blaster shoot with the squid roll saying that the squid roll and squid jump are game changers, they're super good for blasters in particular. Do you agree that the squid roll and surge seem like big buffs to blasters, or is it a little bit overhyped? Either one of you guys can take this. Uh, I don't think we have enough gameplay footage to like really know, but in my head, it's like a, another thing that a blaster kind of struggles with because it's really slow is like, if you take a shot, you're gonna die to a bomb that's thrown in you. you. Like, if you can instantly roll, like, maybe like out of like not full speed swimming or just like when you're just sitting there i think it'd be nice because you can just like squid roll past the bomb and then take a shot probably direct them it'll be really good for blaster players to like actually know how to place their shots well it'll be pretty that'll be pretty nice and like the surge thing up the wall uh i think people are just going to shoot you honestly <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I think it'll work like in some cases because I, I know like if a blaster swims up a wall and instantly directs you. There's not that much counterplay to it, so maybe it'll be nicer if someone's like trying to free fire and you just like surge up the wall and hit a direct. That's like cool, I guess. But mm -hmm. I, I know I feel like those two things will definitely help it. You give a weapon with no mobility some form of movement, it will help like no matter what. But I don't know if it'll be like. Now this is the best weapon in the game because it can roll around. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a pretty good take for it. Con, anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, I it definitely will help. Um, but it kind of just depends on what the kit is and um, how it is in game. And obviously, I don't have it. Um, there's like not enough gameplay footage for me to like actually like criticize it and think and think if it's like good or not for mm -hmm. Blaster specifically. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, something else to mention in terms of Splatoon 3 changes is that a few people pointed out to me is that blasters do have piercing directs where the shot did hit someone when it a range blaster shot and then it traveled a little bit and still exploded. Nice quality of life change. I don't think there's anything we really need to talk about it that much, but that is just another, I guess, nice sign that Nintendo is looking at blasters a little bit. But with that all being said, it's just time for final thoughts. So, I mean, do any of you guys have anything you want to add in terms of blasters, the weapon class as a whole, anything about it, and just kind of any form of wrap-up and final thoughts? Joe, you can start. Um, what can you say again? <laughs> just any kind of wrap-up, final thoughts, anything you want to say that you haven't said already, or if nothing, then I can just go straight to Cotton. Um, no, not really, just... It just kind of needs one of the three buffs that I was saying before. Like, it, all of them are not really efficient, inefficient. They don't have good jump accuracy, and their mobility is really bad. I think if you change even one of those things, it becomes better. You change two, I think the weapon has like potential to be up there, like use like all the time. Give it some quality of life buffs, absolutely. Cotton, anything you want to add to just kind of wrap up this discussion? Anything you want to say that you haven't gotten to say already? Um. What Kia said earlier about invincibility specials, um, maybe if there's less of those, blasters will become better, and the jump RNG, and that's, that's pretty much it. Alright, well, thank you guys so much for joining. If you want to see more content from me, you can be sure to subscribe. And thank you so much for Cotton and Kyo for joining me today. You can find their links in the description, and I will see you all in a future video.